Church, Palapinta County Cowboy Church, where people greet you with a smile and a shame. Glory, hallelujah. Oh, what a place. Hi, I'm Taylor, and this is Mickey. Thank you for participating with us online here today at Palapinta County Cowboy Church. If you have received a blessing from the message today, please consider partnering in ministry with us in spreading God's word. You can do this by going to palopintocowboychurch.com and scrolling to the left side of the home page. Click on the link, click here to give. Thank you for partnering with us and enjoy today's message. Here, we're going to start with Leaning on the Everlasting Arm. What a fellowship, what a joy to find leading on the everlasting arms. What a blessedness, what a peace is mine leading on the everlasting arms. Leading, leading, safe and secure. Learning to 
temptations are at hand, I turn and lean. His strength becomes my strength, and I rise to stand, always learning to lean on Jesus, learning to lean, that you all stand and sing with us standing on the promises with Debbie right here. Standing on the promises of Christ my King through eternal ages let His praises ring glory in the highest I will shout and sing standing on the promises of God request this morning we have Mr. Michael Poe singing It's Supper Time. Three, four, one, two. When I was 
But a boy in days of childhood I used to play Till evening shadows come Then winding down That old familiar pathway I'd hear my mother's voice And said a son Come home, come home It's supper time The shadows lengthen fast Come home Beside her bedside I was kneeling And angel wings Were winnowing the air She heard the call For supper time in heaven And I know She's waiting for me there Okay, it's time to dismiss our kids for Kids Corral. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to Him belong. They are weak, but He is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. 
guys are going to have to wake up a little bit today because I'm, I'm, there you go, thank you, who did that? So I, I, I want you just, I understand we're in the reverent house of the Lord, okay, I get that. We want to be reverent, there's times to be reverent, there's times to be excited, this is one of those times. We are in the house of the Lord, let's be excited about it, amen? There you go. Good. I do not believe being a Christian is something that we walk around with sad faces about, Amen. Yeah, I'm excited to be here. I am wound up, so you're in trouble. Uh, now, Bobby gave me 15 extra minutes the other day when he preached. So I don't want to hear anything, all right? I just, no, I'm only, I'm only kidding. But I do have a lot to say today. Actually, God has a lot to say today, so we're going to get going, and I'm going to quit babbling. Amen? All right, stand, uh, gentlemen, if you'll remove your cover for me, please. As you do this, we're going to read God's precious and holy word this morning. It found in 2 Kings chapter 7, 2 Kings chapter 7. And uh, if you've got your Bible, turn in there. We'll start with verse uh, 1. Uh, if, if not, it's up on the screen for you. Read along with me, please. Elisha replied, Hear the word of the Lord. Now, I want you to do something with me. I want you to repeat that with me because I want to make sure we get this today. So, hear the word of the Lord. Amen. This is what the Lord says about this time tomorrow. Say a finest flour will, be, will sell for a shekel, and two sayas a barley for a shekel at the gate of Samaria. The officer on whose arm the king was leaning said to the man of God, Look! Even if the Lord should open the floodgates of the heavens, could this happen? You will see it with your own eyes, answered Elisha, but you will not eat any of it. Now there are four men. By the way, let me just quickly tell you, there's some stuff happening inside the walls, inside the gate. There's some stuff happening outside the walls. All right, these are the guys outside of the walls. This is going to be important here in a minute. Verse 3, now there were four men with leprosy at the entrance of the city gate. They said to each other, why stay here until we die? If we say we'll go into the city, the famine is there, and we will die. If we stay here, we will die. So let's go over to the camp of the Arameans and surrender. If they spare us, we live. If they kill us, then we die. At dusk, they got up and went to the camp of the Arameans, and when the, they'd reached the edge of the camp, no one was there. For the Lord had caused the uh, Arameans to hear the sound of chariots and the horses and a great army, so that they said to one another, Look, the king of Israel has hired the Hittite and Egyptian kings to attack us. So they got up, and they fled in the dusk and abandoned their tents and their horses and donkeys. They left the camp as it was and ran for their lives. The men who had leprosy reached the edge of the camp, entered one of the tents, and ate and drank. Then they took silver, gold, and clothes and went off, and they hid them. They returned and entered another tent and took some things from it and, also, and hid them also. And then they said to each other, What we are doing is not right. This is a day of good news, and we are keeping it to ourselves. If we wait until daylight, punishment will overtake us. So let's go at once and report this to the royal palace. So they went and they called out to the city gatekeepers and told them, We went to the Aramean camp and no one was there, not a sound of anyone, only tethered horses and donkeys and the tents just left there as they were. The gatekeepers shouted, to the, shouted the news and it was reported within the palace. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, I thank you so much for your word today. Father, I pray that it would penetrate our heart, it would speak to our hearts, it would cause us to move, it would cause us to take action. Father, thank you for being in this place, thank you for your Holy Spirit that is present in this house today. In Jesus Christ's name we pray, amen. Thank you, you may be seated. Now last week I told you, and I'm going to move along so you're going to have to listen quickly. Last week I told you uh, during the 10th anniversary that next week we'll be talking about the church and I, specifically about our church, and specifically about the people in this church. Wasn't last week awesome? Yeah, I agree. 
I, I had a world of fun, I tell you what. But today I want to talk to you from a biblical perspective about the church, uh, especially this church. Now, I, again, I said a while ago, Elijah, the very first thing he says is, hear the word of the Lord. So I want to stop for just a minute. I know you said it with me a while ago, but I want you to remove anything out of your head and out of your heart that would cause you not to hear what the word of the Lord is saying today. Amen? Because I'm telling you, if you've got something on your brain and on your heart or you're thinking about yesterday's rodeo or you're thinking about yesterday's problem or you're thinking, where am I going for lunch here in a little bit because, man, my stomach's already starting to growl, you're going to miss a blessing today. Ten of us. Okay, ten of us are ready for a blessing. That's good. All right, good. All right, let me try that again. You're going to miss a blessing today. Good. Amen. Now, whatever bad advice you've been listening to, and there's plenty of it to go around. By the way, we're going to preach today, so if your feelings get hurt, too bad, okay? Too bad. All right? Just saying. All right? But whatever bad advice you've been listening to, whatever mouth you have bent an ear to hear, whatever doubt is ringing in your ear, oh, it cannot be done. They'll never let me participate. Stop it right now. Stop it right now. Put an end to it. And I'm asking you not to listen to it, and I'm asking you to listen to the word of the Lord because the word of the Lord will speak truth into your ear and into your mouth today. Yeah. Matthew eleven fifteen says, Those that have ears, let them all right, so I want you to just to do me a favor because some of you may have gotten out of the house without them today. Make sure you got both of them on your head, will you? Just make sure you got both of them there. Make sure, come on now, this is an exercise. You got to help me here. Make sure they're there. Good. Make sure they're there. I mean, just because you heard the band doesn't mean that you're in tune to hear the Lord. Amen. Told you. Verse 2, if you still got your Bible open. Guys, if you want to put this back up, this will be fine. Verse number 2, the officer on whose arm the king was leading, leaning said to the man of God, Look, even if the Lord should open the floodgates of heaven, could this happen? Have you ever noticed how many people want to put limits on what God can do? Amen? I'd say there's more of them than there are of us who believe God can do anything. Now, which one are you? Which one are you? Because I'm going to tell you something. The thing about it is, actions speak a whole lot louder than words. Amen? Now, some of us here can say, oh, no, I believe God can do anything as long as he does it through somebody else but me. That's true, though, isn't it? Isn't that true? Yeah, it is true. Okay, good. Yeah. So I, the title of the message today is Go Big or Be Small. Now, here's the, how I came up with this title. I am a firm believer. I am a firm believer with all my heart. If you think small, you are small. If you want to be small, think small, and you'll be small. If you think of a church and you think, wow, I, I, you know, this church is just small. I don't know if it'll ever grow. If you think that way, that's the way you'll always be. Amen? Now, I want to tell you something. There were some people in the early days of this church that thought, you know what? We're not going to be small forever. We're going to reach some people for Jesus Christ, and they set out to do that. They had the mindset of doing that, but i got to tell you something. If we had all gotten a holy little huddle back there with the frozen chosen back when we started this, I'm going to tell you something. This church wouldn't be where it is today. Amen. Go on, give the Lord a hand. I tell you what, he, he deserves it, not me. Yeah. You're right. Good. Now, I do believe that a lot of us just embrace our limitations, don't we? Yes, preacher, we do. Fear. Now, listen to this. Fear is not of God, right? Amen? You believe that? If you don't. Come see me when we get done, and I'm going to tell you why I believe that. Fear is not a God, but fear sets in, and we live in a world full of limitations. In other words, we've already limited ourselves. Therefore, we're going to limit everything else around us. Well, preacher, it can't be done. We don't have the people to do it. 
We don't have the resources to do it. I mean, there, there's just no way we're going to get this done. And so fear sets in, and, and rather than taking a step in faith and going in God's direction and saying, you know what, I don't know if I have all the resources yet, but this is what God's telling me to do. I'm going to take a step in faith. I'm going to do it because I know that God will provide when I get to that next step. Amen? Good. You're with me today. I like this. Preacher, I'm too big. You ain't no bigger than I am. I promise you that. I'm too big. I'm too small. I'm too black or I'm too white. I'm too uneducated. I'm too sick. I'm too old or I'm too young. I'm too bad. I've got way too much history to do anything for God. I can't do it. Do you understand that you're embracing your limitation? Do you understand that if you're sitting here today and you think I'm too bad or I have a history of being bad, you've now just embraced your old life. God's ready to give you a new one and start you on a different track. Amen? Yeah. Now, I will say some limitations are a good thing. <laughs> Amen? Amen? All right, and I've got to tell them myself, uh, uh, it's, it's no secret I love to eat. My mama's cooking and my wife's cooking. I used to be a lot skinnier this than this before I moved to Gordon, Texas. Now, you start eating my mama's cooking and my wife's cooking, and I, I can't get up from the table. But if I didn't have limitations, I promise you, I'd probably be preaching from down yonder because I'd still be at the table. So some limitations are a good thing. Right? Good. Yes. Now, one thing I do love, I love people to challenge me and try to put limitations on one thing. What God can do. Challenge me on that if you want to. Because I'm going to tell you one thing. God can do anything that is according to his will. Amen? Amen. And what God has said can be done and will be done... And I like this part of this plan that God has because there are no limitations to God. God has no limitations. He says, you know what? If I want this cowboy church here and nobody else thinks it's going to work here, guess what? It will work because God said so. Amen? If I want to build an extra building on the back here, uh, on the back of this one, because I believe that we need more room to minister to our kids, guess what? God, if God says it can be done, it will be done. Yeah. Amen? Now, I'm not done yet. You think I'm done. I'm not done yet because this is the first time I put this out here publicly, but I'm going to tell you what else is coming. If God says I want to cover that arena, guess what? That arena will get covered. Yeah. Amen? Now, you may be sitting here going right now, and I bet you there's uh, at least one out of three elders. No, I'm just kidding. But I, I, would, I would think if somebody's in here going, well, where, how are we going to pay for all that? You know what? I have no clue, but God already knows. And all I got to do is trust him, amen, and he'll get it done. Yes. Woo. When the church first started, we were told, oh, you can't hold a service at 430 in the afternoon. Can I get an amen from those of you who are here? Yeah, they said that can't be done. They won't come. They won't come at 4.30 in the afternoon. Guess what? They came. Why? Because God says that's what we're going to do. Amen? Well, I mean, even if you get some people there, you can't put the band inside of a cell ring with bars in front of them, and you certainly can't preach inside a cell ring. You need to figure out some way to move out of that cell ring and preach. Guess what? God said, you know what? You do it like I told you to do it. You don't worry about the outcome because they will come and they will listen, and it happened. <laughs> Amen? <laughs> What God has said can be done, will be done. Amen. And by the way, uh, I want to laugh at the devil for just a minute. You going to laugh with me? I'm going to laugh at the devil because the devil kept saying this won't be done, this won't be done, and God kept saying it will be done, it will be done, and ha-ha, devil, it's been done, and it's still being done. <laughs> now, that's bragging. Yep, you bet it is, but it's bragging on God. Amen. And, and that's where the, the glory and honor goes to. All right, good. Y'all with me so far? 
Good. All right. The arm of the officer. Look at your Bible. The arm of the officer that the king was leaning on became an arm that had absolutely no vision for what was coming. It had zero vision. This officer, this was a trusted person for the king. And the king was asking him to give him some advice. And this trusted officer was saying, Oh, king, I don't think this is going to happen. I don't think you can do this. I don't think you better do this. I don't think you better trust that this is what's going to happen. Amen? Now, rather than thinking big through a big God, he only saw what his eyes were capable of seeing. Do you see everything in advance that God has for you to do? No, you do not. I don't either. I mean, we put our foot one ahead of the other, ahead of the other, ahead of the other, and constantly moving forward because God opens the doors when he's ready to open the door. Amen? Amen? But you and I have to have faith. We have to have trust in a bigger God. And it's a good thing God's in charge because if it was left up to us, nothing would get done. Amen? Amen? Amen. Have you ever missed your blessing because you were leaning on the wrong arm? Don't we do that a lot? Don't we lean on people, lean on people, lean on people, and they just give us one piece of bad advice after another, and we just keep leaning? And the truth of the matter is, is they don't have any more vision than you do. They can't see any farther into the future than you can. And yet we lean on their advice, lean on their advice, and they keep giving us bad advice because God keeps saying, you know what, you need to quit leaning on them and start leaning on me. <laughs> learning to lean. I'm learning to lean on. Okay, come on, you got to get with me. I'm learning to lean on who? Yeah. That's right. Man, if you ain't leaning there, you're leaning on the wrong arm. You're leaning on the wrong arm. And certainly this officer was. Now, failure happens when you entrust your dreams. How many of you have a dream that, that you're working towards or you would like to see it come to fruition sometime in the future? Okay, the rest of you are just dreamless. Okay, all right, that's fine. That's good. That's all right. Yeah, I think we kind of all do. You know, uh, I said something in Bible study the other day, and, and everybody's eyes got about bit this big around. But I'm going to tell you the rest of you what I said in Bible study, and if you come to Bible study, you'd already heard it. <laughs> Just saying. All right. But anyway, I believe that this church is going to see a thousand people. I do. All right. I have faith. There are 20,000 people in Palapena County that do not claim a church home, and I believe that we are going to reach a minimum of 1,000 of them. Amen? Are you ready to do that? All right, good. Good, good, good. All right, failure happens when you entrust your dreams or your calling to somebody else's disappointment. Oof, that's got a bite to it. Somebody else has been disappointed in their dreams. Their dreams of seeing a better future for people or more people come to Christ or a larger church. And, and I don't know what drives everybody to come to church, uh, especially here. But every one of you have a reason for being here, don't you? Amen? Now, I'd like to say I know what that is, but I don't. But... The fact of the matter is, is somebody can easily talk us out of being excited about our salvation in Jesus Christ because at one point in time, for whatever reason, they were disappointed in something or somebody who had that relationship. And they're not like that little nagging ear, right? I mean, a nagging voice inside your ear. Oh, you don't need to go there. They're just going to waste your time. I mean, what do you need cowboy church for? Why do you want to listen to a, a long-winded preacher talk about Jesus for an hour? All right, those of you on the back row, would you gather up and lay hands on him because he's going to need it before we get done. All right, good. Wow. 
That's why I love this church so much. You never know. But you know what? That's all right, brother, because I was called to reach people just like you. So I'm good with that. I am. <laughs> oh, well. All right. Okay. When you lean on the wrong people in your life, you'll ne it'll never work because... And you keep lending that ear to somebody who's got that negativity, and before long, you're going to start getting negative just like them. Amen? Yeah, yeah man. If we receive their doubt, they'll disc our appointment. Not everyone is ready to receive the calling God has for them. Now, I want you to listen to this very carefully. You may be sitting beside somebody today, and one out of the two of you have been called to do something, but you're sitting on your rear end because you think, if it's not both of us, then I can't do it. I got, I got to tell you something. Sometimes God calls people at different points in their life. Maybe you're ready, and they're not. If you're ready and God's calling you, you need to get up off your rear end and do what God's called you to do. Amen? Now, I know that's tough. Especially if it's a husband and a wife. Because they're thinking, well, you're moving on without me. No, you're not. You're leading the way. You're leading the way. You're doing what God has called you to do. And I'm going to tell you one other thing. If you'll be obedient to God, your marriage will get better. Your marriage will get better. Wow. What I need to understand, or what we need to understand is this. If God calls me to do it, I can do it. I can do it. If God calls me, he's going to equip me to do whatever he's called me to do. Amen? Okay, good. All right. Don't tell me I can't do it. Don't displace your disappointments on my calling. And if God is before me, who can be against me? Nobody. Nobody. Amen. Wow. If you feel the need to be a sightseer today, and if you feel the need to be a sightseer inside this church, I am extremely glad you're here, but you might want to move out of the way because we're coming. <laughs> Limitations you embrace will regulate the blessing that you experience. If you have come here today and you are embracing every limitation that you have in your life, guess what? You're missing a blessing. You're missing a a blessing. Verse 2, the officer on whose arm the king was leaning said to the, uh, uh, the man of God, the second part of this was one I want to look at real quick. Look, even if the Lord should open the floodgates of heaven, could this happen? This officer closed the gate. This officer closed the gate. Now, you might want to write that down somewhere. Now, here's the reason why I say this, because God was about to bless this group until this one person shut the gate. Is there one person that can shut the gate on an entire nation? There's one person that can shut the gate on an entire church. One person. One person who stands at the gate and says, this can't happen, can affect the entire outcome of everything. Amen? Wow. Wow. If you look more closely at the account of Elisha and the king, you'll see that this country was in a famine. Now, this famine was happening not because of, the, of the, no rain. This famine was happening because the army, the Aramean army, had cut off these folks' food supply. Now, it could happen here in the United States. I mean, one, one little, uh, you know, a terrorist outbreak in the right spot, and you and I could be sitting here looking and searching for food. Amen. We understand that. And this is exactly what, what had happened. They'd gotten cut off. Now, it, it, again, since the devil cannot prevent God from blessing you, the one thing he can do is place you in a spiritual sea so you cannot access the blessings of God. I want you to listen to this very closely. He can seize you up. He can get your mind, and this is the reason why I asked you when we started today, is to clear your mind and clear your heart. Because what he can do, and he's probably doing in somebody's mind and heart right this second, is he's seizing you up where you will not get the blessing of today. You're not listening. You're not paying attention. 
The devil's got something running through your head right now. He seized you up just like that because he didn't want you to hear the blessing of God today. And so he's seizing you up. He's got control of you. And he's saying, you know what? I can't stop God from coming into this place and blessing these people. But what I can do is seize up their minds this morning so they won't hear. So they won't hear. Whew. Be careful who you lean on. And I'm going to tell you, be careful who you lean on because whoever you're leaning on now may affect the blessings of your next season. Just might. Sometimes you and I have to restrict access who we're around. Uh, uh, this is important right here, and I know this is tough. Some of you need new friends. I don't know how else to put it. Some of you need to make some new acquaintances. Somebody needs to get involved here at the church and start having Christ-like friends that are going the same direction they are instead of hanging out with the wrong crowd because because you're leaning on the wrong people, and by the way, you're going the wrong way. Amen? Good. Be careful who you lean on. If we lean on the wrong people, we stay small. If you lean on the wrong people, you stay small. See, the thing about it is God has plans for you. He has big plans for you. And if you don't lean on him, you're never going to experience the blessings, which then turns into the big plans he has. If you lean small, you'll be small. If you lean big, you'll be big. Ooh. Now, again, let's look at verse 2. You still got your Bibles open? Amen. The officers, on, and I've, I've said this a bunch. I'm going to skip down just a little bit, little bit because it's the next part of this uh, that Elisha tells uh, the king and the, uh, uh, the person the king is leaning on, the officer. You will see it with your own eyes, answered Elisha, but you will not eat any of it. In other words, you're going to watch it happen. You're just not going to get to participate. This is what I'm trying to tell this church over the next 10 years. And this is what I believe God's telling us. It's going to happen. You can either be a part of it or you can sit right there and watch it happen. But I'm going to tell you something. The bigger blessing is getting involved and being a, a part. Amen? Amen. Is this hitting home with anybody? Whew. Good stuff. Man. Hmm. If you spend some time this afternoon reading around this passage right here, and I want to encourage you to do that. I, I, for time's sake, I can't read it all. But I want you to look around this, uh, this passage today, and I think you're going to find that the person that the king was leading on, the person that shut the gate, you know what happened to him? Does anybody know? Has anybody read around this enough to run? You know? He gets run over. He gets stampeded. He's dead. He's dead. because. And where was he standing when this happened? He was standing in the gate. Amen? How many of you feed cows? How many of you feed cows? Let me see hands. Okay. What happens when you put out feed and stand between the cows and the feed? <laughs> Bad things come about. Amen? Okay. This is exactly what's happening right here. There is food, there is blessings, there is nutrition, there is, there is, well, for all practical purposes, physical salvation on the other side of the gate. And this dude's standing between the people needing the nourishment and where the nourishment is. He got run over. He got run over. Now, I want to say that I think there's a biblical connotation to this for us today because I'm going to tell you something. I love every one of you, but we're moving for Jesus Christ. If you don't get out of the gate, you may get run over. Amen? Now, here's what I want you to do. Find somebody beside you and say, get out of the gate. Yeah. Hmm, good stuff, amen? I really see this church moving forward, and if you've determined yourself to be a gate blocker, you probably got a problem here. You really do. 
uh, because I, I tell you what, I believe that the people that are are excited about what God's doing in this church are moving forward, and they have every intention to keep moving forward. Amen. Elisha is telling us that some see the vision, some see the potential provision from God, but some people just simply choose not to experience it. You know what I believe? I believe that all of you have seen the potential here. I think you've all seen the potential promises from God that he said, you know what, I tell you what, I'm going to bless this place. But I think some people are just too scared to experience the fullness of it and the blessings of it. I'd rather sit on the fence and watch somebody else work cattle than get in the middle of it and work on myself. And I, I'll tell you what, the blessings come from being involved. The blessings come from being a part of what's going on. Rather than going big and believing God can and will, we choose to blame others and stay small. Ooh, this is good. Y'all re- this is going to hit right here. We choose to blame others and stay small. Contained in our wants and desires, we never talk or take a hold of the blessings of God. Small-minded people... You know them, I know them. They never reach their full potential or capacity because they stay just behind the gate in what they believe is the safest spot in a church. Go something like this. Somebody else will do it. Somebody else will do it. Somebody else will take care of that. Oh, Joey's not up here making announcements asking for help in Kids Corral Nursery or whatever because somebody, that's somebody else's call and somebody else will take care of that. The safe spot is just behind the gate. I don't have to do anything if I stand just behind the gate. But I'm going to tell you something else. You can stay there until somebody runs you over and you can stay there and not receive any blessing at all. But the minute you go through the gate, step out into the work of God, that's where the blessings are. The only way we're going to get to 1,000 people is if we all commit to getting out of the gate. That's the only way it's going to happen. We could be like the nation of Israel. We could be stuck behind the walls, gates shut, and we could never experience anything. But one of these days when the famine comes, and it might, guess what's going to happen? We're all going to starve to death. Gate open, out of the way, moving forward. That's where the blessings are. Are you getting it this morning? Okay, good. I told you this is going to be a different precursor to Easter, didn't I? Yeah, I mean, this is. Our disbelief can and will block our own blessings. By the way, the devil does not block your blessing. But you never heard that before, have you? The devil's not up there going, guess what, Ike Mercer, I'm going to get over here and I'm going to block any blessing from coming to you because I can. You know who blocks your blessing? You do. You do. I don't know about you, but I don't want to help the devil. The devil's messed up my life enough. I don't, he don't need no help. Amen? What I want to do is I want to be a blessing and encourager, not a blessing blocker. Therefore, I want to get outside of the gate and help God do what God intends to do, which is bless you, bless me, and bless this community, bless this state, and bless this nation. Amen? Now, if you truly believe this, And some of you are clapping, some of you are half-heartedly clapping, some of you are not clapping at all. But if you truly believe this, if you totally believe in the true and complete power of God, there's nothing people can do to you, say to you, say about you, try to lock you out of, or or will keep you from this church and the promises of God. There is nothing that they can do to prevent you from being blessed as long as you step forward out of the gate. There's not. They can run their mouth all they want to. Good for them. One of these days, I hope God gets a hold of their tongue and saves their soul. Amen? I really do. 
But there's nothing to prevent us other than us from going forward and doing what God called us to do. There's nothing. All right. Now, whew. let me give you some kind of idea. You know, have you ever noticed this? Uh, some people block the message of God, and, and some of you block, it, block the message of God today. I'm looking around because I don't want to call on anybody, but I'm just kind of looking around a little bit. Uh, I love people. Like, let me get my chair. Typical church member. And by the way, this is usually not the unsaved. This is usually the saved. Uh, now, I can understand a, an, an unsaved person doing this, but I can't understand a saved person doing this. They come in with the attitude of blocking their blessings. And you know how I know that? Go ahead, preacher. See if you can get through this because I'm not buying it. You know, I came here today because my wife made me come, but I'm telling you right now, I, I'm really not that interested. I don't really care what you have to say, and I don't believe there's going to be anything blessing on me other than getting out of here and going to lunch. Have you seen it? Their body language tells you I'm, I'm blocking everything. Block. Block. <laughs> Amen? You know, the person that comes in ready to receive the Word of God, I mean, I think they're on the edge of their chair going, Speak to me, Lord. Man, I'm excited about being here. I need something today. I want it. I know I'm ready. My heart's wide open. Speak to me, God, because that's why I'm here. Blessing blockers. Now you're going to walk around looking for somebody with their arms crossed, aren't you? I know you are. <laughs> well, I got to finish this. Let me finish this. Verse 3. Now there were four men. I love these guys right here. These are guys on outside of the gate. They're sitting on the other side. They're not sitting on the inside in the holy huddle. And the church of the frozen chosen, they're on the outside of the gate looking in or looking out and going, wow, I can see something totally different from this side. There were four men with leprosy. Now, the thing about leprosy is leprosy can be anything. It's a skin condition. It can be anything from a discolorization. Wait on. I should have re my dentures. Uh, discolorization to actual boils on the skin. I mean, it can be anything. But when you got leprosy, you had to announce the fact that you were unclean. I'm unclean. Don't come around me. If you come around me, you're liable to get what I have. So I have to announce I'm unclean. I'm unclean. Over here, I'm unclean. Now, what would happen if today's church had to announce the fact they were unclean? What would you say? I'm on Facebook too much. I like my wine. I like my cigarettes. I like my snuff. I like to eat. I'm unclean. I like to eat too much. I'm an adulterer. I'm into pornography. What would happen if somebody had to do that? I mean, I've got a feeling that the waters would part. Pew. Amen? And don't you know that this is how these guys felt? You know, all they had was a skin condition, but because they didn't have any idea what it was, they had to go around telling everybody, even their friends, even the people they didn't know, anytime somebody came to the gate, don't come over here, I'm unclean. Ooh, right here's the good stuff. This is the good stuff. Because if we read on in this passage right here, it is the four guys that were unclean that God used to save this nation. Amen. 
You know, I've seen this happen time after time after time in this church, and this is why I love being a cowboy preacher. I have seen people on the outside that were unclean, spiritually unclean, do some amazing things inside the church building because they got right with God and started serving him. So in our scripture, these four guys are out here, and they're, they're going, you know what? We're experiencing a little bit of hunger here. Something's going on. The food's not coming. We're, they had to totally rely on the people inside the walls, and, and they're not getting any food. You know, we're starting to get a little hungry. Few, you know, a few weeks past, we're getting real hungry. As a matter of fact, we've realized that if we stay right here, we're going to die. If we go inside... We're probably going to die. And so they come up with a plan. I love this plan. I tell you what, I believe this is a God-inspired plan. Uh, uh, look over here uh, in this particular passage right here, and it says, And if we stay here, we'll die, so let's go over to the camp of the uh, Aramaeans and surrender. Like I just said, the people that God has used, the, the unclean people or spiritually unclean people that God has used, you know what they did before they got used? They surrendered. Listen to me. They surrendered. They stopped and said, you know what? I can't change all this on my own. I can't be who God wants me to be on my own. I've got to surrender to somebody that's bigger, better, more powerful. I've got to go big and, start, and stop being small. I'm going to go big, and I'm going to surrender to Jesus Christ. Amen? Go big. Whew, these guys went big. They surrendered. Wow. Think about it. People inside the gate, people inside the walls, people inside the inner circles, they're the ones that didn't believe. It was the people on the outside of the wall that had every reason not to believe who did. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Now, my question is, if we all got on the outside of the wall and believed, what could happen inside this church? There's where your thousand people are coming from. Because I tell you what, I, 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 and I believe this is not just our church. I think this happens in every church. But every, people, every person gets inside the church building on Sunday, and they get comfortable, and they get fat and happy, and they go, you know what, somebody else will do it. I'm just going to come to church, check it off my list, go home, and it, everything's good. But the people that get excited about what God's doing inside the church building take that excitement with them outside, and they share it with somebody. How do I know this? Because I believe four men would have died if they just sat there and did nothing. And I believe that an entire nation would have died if these four men had done nothing. Verse 8, the men who had leprosy reached the edge of the camp, entered one of those tents, and they ate and drank. They nourished themselves. They took silver, gold, and clothes and went off, and they hid them. Uh-oh. Now we have a problem, right? We'll come back to that. They returned and entered another tent and took some things from it. Go big or stay small. These guys could have simply said, well, nobody helped us. Listen carefully, because I guarantee you this has come out of somebody's mouth in this church. I'm not doing that. You didn't help me. When I needed help, you didn't come to my rescue. When I needed something, you didn't come take care of me. They could have done that, right? As a matter of fact, it looks as though they may be moving in that direction. You know what? We'll just fend for ourselves. We'll take care of us. We'll hoard all this up, and we'll never have to worry again. Verse 9, then they said to each other, what we are doing is not, what we are doing is not, ah, uh, boy, don't you hate that little nagging Holy Spirit thing. I'm, by the way, I'm kidding. But it's that little voice inside our heart and our ears that say, you know what? What you're doing is not right. You need to quit it. You need to stop it. 
Because what you're doing is not good. You're being small. You're being small-minded. You're thinking small. You're acting small. Everything you do is small, and it's not right. So these guys say the following. If we wait until daylight, punishment will overtake us. Let's go at once and report this. Report this to the palace. Now, I love what happens after this. Are you with me so far? Okay. So they went and they called out to the city gatekeepers and told them, we went to the Aramean camp, and no one was there. And in other words, the enemy we thought was going to be there, the way we thought this was going to work out, guess what? It didn't happen. They weren't even there. How many battles inside of your life have you cho chose not to face because you thought the outcome was going to be ten times worse than it actually was? It's that way with all of us, isn't it? Fear. The devil seized you up and going, no, I wouldn't do that. I mean, that person's going to be really ticked at you. I mean, look what you did to them. Look the way you treated them. You cut them off. They're not going to be happy. I wouldn't go talk to that person. I wouldn't be around that person because they are not going to be happy. Boy, I wouldn't go to that church. I wouldn't go down to that cowboy thing. I don't know what that is, but that, that ain't no church. You don't, you don't need to go down to that cowboy church thing because you know what? It's going to be weird. <laughs> Got an old country honky-tonk band playing. There's, there's people in there that ain't been to, ever been to church before. I mean, there's no telling what you're going to expect. They, they make noise down there. And so what you do is you seize up and you stay right where you are and you're this big around. Amen? Amen? Never experiencing the blessings of God. But these guys experienced the blessing. They got outside of the gate. They got over their fear. They went into the camp and lo and behold, God had already taken care of that situation before they got there. Whew. How many of you would have missed a blessing today if you hadn't come? Amen. And there's some that are waiting for Easter Sunday, I can already tell. But I'm telling you what, we, I don't know about y'all, but in, in this house today, we're going to get blessed before Easter ever gets here. Amen. Amen. When you think big... You, there is absolutely no way you can contain the excitement God has for you. You know, you, you can't. You can, you can see the people around here that are excited about what God's doing in their life because I tell you what, they'll sit and they'll just hop, 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 for hours. Right? I mean, they'll talk to you, talk to oh, man, man, it's good stuff here. You know, amen. And, God's, and it doesn't even have to be here. You know, it could be in their life. You know, I, you know, I once was a sinner. I got saved. Now look what God's doing for me. I, I tell you what, I can't contain it. I got to go tell somebody. We got four guys right here that found life in the Word. They found life. And, yeah, they could have kept it to themselves. But they said, you know what, that's wrong. I can't, I can't hold in. I can't contain what's happening to me right now. I can't contain it. i got to get excited about it. i got to go tell somebody. So I'm going to go to the gate. They may not let me in, but i tell you what, they're going to hear me. They're going to hear me. Because I'm going to be standing down there on the ground. That gate may be shut. Those walls may be high, but I'm going to be yelling over the top. They ain't there. The enemy ain't there. You ain't got to be scared no more. Get out of the gate. Hey, come on. I found life on the other side of the gate. I want you to bow your head. Gentlemen, if you'll come on up. This is so important this morning. Here's the reason why. This is the one of the most pinnacle important weeks in the life of a Christian. This is the week where we take the steps with Christ 
Oh, this is Palm Sunday. He goes through his trial. He goes through his crucifixion. And by the time you and I get together this next time, Jesus will rise. But this morning, we're taking a few minutes to remember what he did on Calvary. If you want to talk about going big, if you want to be big and not small, the best place that I know to start with is the cross of Jesus Christ. That's where I know to start. Because it don't get no bigger than that. He shed his body. He shed his blood for your and my sins. And by the way, every single one of us in here are sinners. We all deserve to die. Amen? And I mean all of us. But Jesus with the Father and their infinite mercy and their infinite wisdom and their infinite grace, came to this earth and became a sacrifice for every single one of us in this room. And today we're going to remember that. But before we do, I want to ask you to do something. I'm going to ask you, as your heads are bowed, as your heads are bowed, everybody quiet. As your heads are bowed, and your eyes are closed. The Bible tells us that before we come to the table, that we need to clear our hearts and clear our minds. And we need to repent from the sin that we have in our life. It says we need to acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord, and we need to acknowledge the sacrifice that he made on our behalf. But we can't not do that with an unclean spirit. Because if we do, we take this in condemnation and judgment against God. So I'm asking you this morning, before you come to this table, that whatever's in your life, whatever's in your head, whatever's in your heart, that you confess it to Christ right now. And that you come to this table totally and completely appreciative of the sacrifice of his body, and the sacrifice of his blood on Calvary. Father, we come to you today. Father, we thank you for your word. And Father, I just pray if there be anybody in here today, Father, that needs you, Father, uh, that needs your son Jesus Christ in life, that they will not hesitate to accept you as Lord and Savior. Father, it's out of fear. It's out of fear that we reject you. It's out of fear that we walk out of this place like we were when we came in. But Father, you have offered new life, new provisions, new blessings. Father, help us to take and receive those blessings today. And Father, I just pray that that person that's here today, Father, that needs you as a Lord and Savior, that they'll do it right now. They won't wait. Father, that they'll receive you into their heart. Father, you did the work on Calvary. All that you ask us to do is believe, confess, and repent. Father, confess that you are who you say you are, that you are the living, breathing God the God that has come in to this world to save us from sin. And, Father, we receive your Son, Jesus Christ, into our heart today, Father. We believe that he is the true Son of God, that he did take the payment for our sin, the, the payment that we should have paid. You took it off of us. Father, we ask that you come into our hearts today, Father, that you just take up residence in our heart. Father, you ask us to repent and turn away from sin. So, Father, today we just ask that you would just encourage us, Father, to move away from that old lifestyle, to move away from that sinful lifestyle. Father, that might even mean moving away from some people that we're so used to being around. But, Father, we just give ourselves up to you today, knowing that you are the living God. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy, and thank you for loving us. In Jesus' name, 
Thank you for watching this week's message, and we hope you'll come and give us a look this Sunday. Here you'll find some of the finest country gospel music in the state of Texas, along with good, sound, Bible-based preaching. And I promise, you'll always be greeted with a handshake and a smile. Won't you come join us this Sunday at 10.30 a.m., and we'll have the coffee ready.